Welcome to Patty's Aquatics, and in this video, I want to do a profile of a fish, a fish that is near and dear to my heart, the Fahaka Puffer. What I'd like to do is go over some of the how-to care tips, but also share my own experiences with keeping this fish. I'd also like to give a special thank you shout out to the Facebook group Fahaka Puffer Fish Keepers. I put a post out a while back asking if any of the members would be interested in sharing any of their photos or videos for this project. So in this video, you'll see not only pictures and videos of my Fahaka Puffer, but you'll see some of theirs. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's start talking about Fahaka Puffers. Now this fish comes from Africa, mostly from the northern part of it. It also goes by the name the Nile Puffer or the Globe Puffer, but it's most commonly known as the Fahaka Puffer. And with that, one thing that Fahaka Puffers and all Puffers for that matter are known for are worms. With being wild caught, it's best to deworm your fish when you get them. Now, I did not have to. Uh, my local fish store owner, when he ordered it in for me, kept him for two weeks and dewormed him and got him all nice and fat and eating again. I've also read that it is not a bad idea to deworm your fish again later on. Um, as far as what dewormers you want to use and medication, that's completely and entirely up to you. Now, if you're looking into a Fahaka puffer, you should know its growth rate. See, they grow about one inch per month for the first 10 months to a year, and then they grow the remainder of their size the next following year, which it can reach a max size of about 18 inches long. So that leads us to the next question. What size tank should I put this fish in? I'll tell you what the internet says. You should have a minimum footprint of five foot by two foot by two foot, which equates to about 150 gallons. What you need to do is keep in mind though that this fish, like I said, can get up to 18 inches long. So if you're looking to get this fish in an aquarium, bigger is always better. Now that being said, my aquarium is only 75 gallons, but my Fahaka puffer has only reached 12 inches long in a year and a half. But I've always been prepared to upgrade that tank to something bigger if it would have ever reached that max size to give it more swimming room which is not ideal. It's best to be able to get the big tank right away, but it just didn't fit my situation, nor am I gonna to dictate to you what size tank you need to get. That's entirely up to you and your situation for you to figure out. Now that we talked about what size aquarium you need, let's talk about what we put in it. And let's start with that substrate. And that substrate should be sand. Sand is a Fahaka Puffer's best friend. They love to dig in it, they love to bury themselves in it. Mine loves to blow it around looking to uncover snails to eat. Now, what kind of sand should you use? In my personal opinion, I don't really think it matters. You could use play sand, pool filter sand. I use the black diamond blasting sand. You could get sands from your local fish stores. Like I said, I don't think it really matters. You just need to get whatever look you like and you want for your own tank. So what do you put in that sand with it? Well, that's entirely up to you, but I love plants and driftwood. And so does my Fahaka Puffer. He's got multiple hiding spots underneath that piece of driftwood where he likes to pit, dig out little pits. And he also likes to spend a lot of his time swimming and hovering around within the plants. I think it kind of brings out its predatory nature trying to hunt down the snails, but it also gives him a sense of security to be able to have that cover within the plants and underneath that piece of driftwood. And then an added bonus, those plants help with the nitrogen process, which is a huge beneficial factor. Now let's talk about the personality of this fish a little bit. I've never owned a fish that's as personal as this one before. I've had Oscars before and they definitely are, but this one by far takes the cake. He legitimately follows me from one side of the tank to the other like a little puppy dog. And anytime I come by the tank, he comes out and interacts with me. I find this to be probably one of the most important reasons why I like this fish is how personable and interactive that it is. And I think that's a big reason why the Fahaka Puffer is as popular as it is because of its personality. Well, let's talk a little bit about tank mates. Can you have tank mates with the Fahaka Puffer? Well, the simple answer is yes and no. Every fish is different. I've seen some people to be able to keep multiple tank mates with their Fahakas and others that will kill anything that's in there with them. 
Now, that being said, if you plan on keeping tank mates with your Fajaca, it's very important to realize that anything you put in there could potentially be eaten or killed. My tank was previously a community tank before I got my puffer. When I got him, I removed a, the bigger Tetras and kept a lot of the smaller ones like the Ember Tetras and the Cardinal Tetras because my thought was as he got bigger, they'd be quicker and faster potentially and be able to hide places to be able to survive in there with him. And they lived harmoniously for many, many months. But then I noticed slowly that the numbers of my fish were starting to drop. Now, I know one plus one equals two. Well, that tells me he's eating them. They're not just disappearing. So that being said, if you're considering putting tank mates in with your Fahaka puffer, just keep this in mind. Like I said before, they could be eaten or killed. Now let's talk about my absolutely favorite part of keeping this fish, and that's feeding them. What should you feed a Fahaka puffer? Well, there's plenty of options. The main staples of food of mine were first when it was younger, frozen brine shrimp and frozen bloodworms. And then now currently is frozen raw shrimp, crabs, crayfish, rapashi grub pie, clams in a half shell, and his absolute favorite and a must, snails. The most important part about feeding this fish is regularly feeding it foods that are like snails and crabs and crayfish. You need that crunchy crustacean type food for its teeth. The Fajaca puffer's teeth continue to grow nonstop. So you need to feed them this food to be able to wear those teeth down. If you do not do that, they will grow too long and the fish could potentially die from not being able to eat or you must remove the fish from the water and manually Cut those teeth down. So that's why I highly recommend if you plan on getting a Fajaca puffer is to grow out snails in numerous other tanks ahead of time so you have a mass population of them. I have about 10 tanks in my fish room that I've grown snails in for a couple years before I even got my Fajaca puffer. And I found myself getting low on snails from taking from them every single day or every other day for him to eat. So that is a big must. Make sure you have a good snail population before you start this journey with the Fajaca Puffer. Well, I hope you enjoyed that profile of the Fajaca Puffer. It is by far my favorite fish ever. If you're considering getting one, I hope any of this information may have helped you, or if you just maybe enjoyed watching the video itself and learning a little bit more about it. Either way, if you like this content, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell because you don't want to miss any of my upcoming projects. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time here at Patty's Aquatics.